Hey guys, Dr. Whitney Bow here with That Bow Glow, and today I'm gonna to tell you all about the sunshine vitamin, vitamin D, and your health. Now, in the last several years, there's been a lot of talk about vitamin D and how it's vital to your overall health. It's made in your skin upon exposure to UV light, specifically UVB light, and it does a lot for us. Vitamin D is actually a hormone in the body that has many responsibilities. The fact that there are receptors for vitamin D throughout the entire body speaks volumes about its importance. Not only does it help us maintain strong bones by helping us absorb calcium in our intestines, but it actually acts as part of our immune system, which is why a low level of vitamin D has been associated with many health conditions from increased risk of fractures to cardiovascular disease, deadly cancers, to cognitive decline, and even autoimmune issues, things like multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, and even type 1 diabetes. Now, there are even some studies suggesting, but not proving, that higher levels of vitamin D might be protective against melanoma. Now, healthy levels of vitamin D support a healthy digestive system and even mood stability. Yes, that means less depression and greater well-being. And in terms of skin health, get this, studies show that vitamin D protects neurons from the damaging effects of free radicals and reduces inflammation. All good things for skin health. And in 2017, a team of researchers at Cleveland Medical Center showed that oral supplementation of vitamin D can quickly reduce inflammation caused by a sunburn. But here's the challenge. In a world where we cover our skin with sunscreen, thereby blocking out the UVB light that's necessary for the skin to make vitamin D, are we missing out? Are we trading one problem for another? I have a lot of patients who come from their regular doctor telling me their vitamin D levels are low, and they wonder if they should limit their sunscreen use once in a while to get a good dose. After all, isn't making vitamin D with the sun's help the best, most natural way? Well, first of all, let me say that figuring out all the factors that can affect your vitamin D levels is complicated. In theory, sunscreen use lowers vitamin D levels, but in reality, very few people actually use enough sunscreen to block out all the UVB light, and most people use sunscreen irregularly. Studies show that people use about half the sunscreen they actually need to even get the SPF on the bottle. So sunscreen's effects on vitamin D might actually not be all that important. In fact, a popular Australian study showed no difference, zero difference in vitamin D between adults randomly assigned to use sunscreen one summer and those assigned a placebo cream, basically, with no UVB blocking power at all. In fact, sunscreen use is probably at the bottom of the list of things that factor into your vitamin D levels. Your age, weight, skin color, where you live, and even how much pollution is in the air all factor into the equation. Generally speaking, people who live in northern latitudes, dark-skinned people, obese people, and older folks tend to have lower levels. Genetic predisposition and even diet are probably factors as well. So cholesterol acts as a precursor for vitamin D. So your body needs cholesterol to make its own vitamin D. So if you eat a low cholesterol diet and you've been avoiding egg yolks and opting for fat-free dressings, you might not have enough cholesterol to actually produce sufficient levels of vitamin D. Add that to the fact that it's actually really hard to get all the vitamin D you need through foods alone, even if you aren't on a low cholesterol diet. Now, you may be asking yourself, should I go to my doctor and get my vitamin D level measured? As of now, the jury is still out as to whether healthy people should get screened for vitamin D deficiency. According to recent U.S. Preventive Services Task Force guidelines, current evidence is insufficient to assess the risks versus the benefits of screening for vitamin D deficiency in people who have no symptoms of a true deficiency. So symptoms of a vitamin D deficiency would be things like muscle weakness and bone pain. And other reasons you should be tested would be if you have osteoporosis, if you don't absorb fat properly, like if you have celiac disease or you've had a weight loss surgery, 
or if you take a medication that interferes with vitamin D activity, such as certain seizure medications or steroids. So even though vitamin D testing is widely available, we don't actually have enough data showing that screening people who don't have symptoms actually does any good. So at this point in time, regardless of whether you've had a blood test or not, I recommend taking a vitamin D supplement. From not only my perspective, but from the American Academy of Dermatology, it's best to get this vitamin through supplementation rather than exposure to skin damaging sun. So for healthy adults, I generally recommend about a thousand international units of vitamin D3 a day. Now this is one case where more is not better. If you take too much, you can actually do damage to your body. And don't forget, you can also get the vitamin from foods, foods like salmon, mushrooms, cheese, eggs, and fortified dairy products and drinks like almond milk. This is just one more reason not to feel so guilty about throwing the occasional egg yolk into your egg white omelet. But most people have a hard time getting enough vitamin D through diet alone. Now the safe upper limit is 4,000 international units a day. So if you take a supplement with 1,000 international units and you eat a few eggs or a piece of salmon, you're still in a very safe range of vitamin D. Now if you have specific questions about the the exact amount that's right for you, it's a great question to ask your primary care doctor. Thank you for sharing this time with me and for taking the time to focus on your most healthy radiant skin. Until next time.